President Trump just concluded a speech in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Here's what he said about a possible 2020 matchup with Oprah. I'd love Oprah to win. I'd love to beat Oprah. I know her weakness. No, no, I know her weakness. I, I know her. You know, I know her very well. I was on her last show, or one of the last, I guess the last week. She had Donald Trump and Donald Trump's family. My, 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 we've come down a long way, haven't we? I'm now president and probably, you know, but, but think of it. I know her weakness. Wouldn't we love to run against Oprah? I would love it. I would love it. That would be a painful experience for her. <laughs> Joining me now with reaction, former Secret Service agent and NYPD officer Dan Bongino, who is a contributor at NRA TV and video bloggers Diamond and Silk. All right, I'll start with the ladies. It's going to be painful for Oprah if she runs against President Trump. What do you guys think? Oh, it will be painful. Very. He is going to chew her up and spit her out, and we will help him. Yeah. Yes, uh-huh, yes. She is going to get beat badly. What do you think Oprah's weakness would possibly be? Um, I think her weakness is the fact that she is going along with discrimination, inequality, um, and no one is saying anything about it. You know, that's what I think her weakness is. And that's what, and listen, she's not for the American people. She built a school in Africa. She wasn't worried about the American people here, the children in Chicago or that's Baltimore. Right. So those are her weakness. Okay. Um, Dan, I want to get you to react to some sound about North Korea. Let's listen to the president and hear what you have to say. I don't know if you saw it, but we've had a problem for years with North Korea. This should have been handled, by the way, over the last 30 years, not now. That's when it should have been handled. They shouldn't have handled it. This should have been handled, and everybody will say it, too. But that's okay, because that's what we do. We handle things. This doesn't happen. You know, they're saying, oh, well, Obama could have done that. Trust me, he couldn't have done that. He wouldn't have done that. He would not have done it. And by the way, neither would Bush and neither would Clinton. And they had their shot and all they did was nothing. They, well, Clinton gave away billions and billions of dollars. And as soon as they made the deal, the following day, they started working on making more nukes. We've been very strong and very vigilant. And now lots of good things I think are gonna happen, but we'll see. All right, so Dan, the president's making the point that he came out with a lot of tough talk, fire and fury, and everybody on the left and the media said this was going to cause World War III. But it didn't. Everyone's now coming to the negotiating table. Do you think the left and the media are going to give him any credit or not? Um, well, listen, shockingly, Jesse, even some people on CNN actually said if he pulls this off, He'd be a great president. Believe me, I'm no fan of CNN, and it pains me to have to give them credit. But let me Would just you have explain. to catch that at the airport when you're waiting for your flight? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, and I, 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 you can't hear anything, which is great. You can only see the talking right. heads in the airport. Right. But here's the thing. Donald Trump, what got him elected, Jesse, he's a doer, okay? He's not an explainer. He gives great speeches. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking his ability to give a speech. Nobody motivates a crowd. Obama was an explainer. He spoke yeah. in fine Shakespearean prose. Uh, he could, he could, he, I'll tell you what, he could talk a, a crowd into anything, Barack Obama, but he wasn't a doer. Kim Jong un knows Trump as a doer too. And I think he's legitimately afraid that Trump may be a doer when it comes to a first strike. And I think that's what motivated him to get to the table. You can't mistake. Yeah. You can't extract those two, the doer versus the And it's, it's amazing that President Obama used to be able to speak like this for about an hour, and we'd have nothing to show for it. It would be very difficult to get a soundbite. He would break very little news. But, I mean, this president can speak for an hour and change and cover almost every single topic and, you know, set the agenda for the next few days. Ladies, I want to get your opinion. The president said something else about the women's vote. Let's hear it. Women won't like Donald Trump. I said, have I really had that kind of a problem? I don't think so. But women won't like Donald Trump. It will be a rough night for Donald Trump because the women won't come out. We got 52%, right? 52, right? And I'm running against the woman. You know, that's not that easy. 155 million people are now employed 
That is, came out this morning, that is the highest level of employment in the history of our country. Mm. So the women's vote very critical to the president's re-election ladies. What does he need to do to improve that, do you think? Well, I think that he already have the women. I mean, That's we fine. all love him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really and truly. And he's done amazing um, things when it comes to women because the women, the unemployment rates on one, one women are low. Mm -hmm. um, unlike up on Obama, it was extremely high. That's so right. I think he is doing a phenomenal job with women. I think he's going to do well. I don't think he need to do anything extra. We love that he is being himself. Yes. We're not asking him to be politically correct. What we want him to do is be correct about the border, secure it. That's keep right. on keep fixing this economy where yes. we're thriving and we're going to help him make America great again. So he had the women. All of them. All right. Well, and the president did touch on the threat from MS-13 and uh, all the great job the ICE agents are doing. Dan, we got to run because we got to hit the break, but I just want to thank you guys for sticking around and uh, kicking it around on Waters. Chadwick, I, I know I'm painting with a broad brush here, but I can kind of picture the staffer in question sneering <laughs> at the middle of the country and maligning an entire group based on their skin color, which I thought was not allowed. Right. Yeah, I don't believe your guest for one second when he thinks, your former guest, when he says he thinks that these, these articles are meant to be satire, make fun of racism. No, 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 no. It, it's exactly, I think, how you painted it, these sort of uh, liberal Oberlin kids who graduated and live in Brooklyn and, and for some reason want to... Uh, believe in this sort of dismantle the wealth narrative and they think the way to do that is to attack white people. I mean, it's, it's Marxism, it's socialism, and it has the mainstream media's ear, it has mainstream society's ear. Uh, when you see these people who, who obsess over victimhood so much, it's so fascinating because if, if you want to see racism everywhere, if you're brainwashed to see racism everywhere or homophobia everywhere or whatever, then you will. That's the world you will live in. You know, I was having a conversation with, uh, with a woman uh, not too long ago about this, a, a young upper middle class black woman. And she was talking about how badly she you know, gets treated on the street here in New York. And I said to her, what if you lived for one day as a white woman and you were treated the exact same way? People were just as rude to you. What then? Yeah, it uh, doesn't make anybody happier to see everything through that lens. Um, yeah. So let me ask you about something that happened yesterday on The View. I personally missed it, but I've seen the tape. Maybe you saw co-host Joy Behar reacted to the ongoing protests we've been seeing in Iran by saying the U.S. is on the very brink of executing gay people in the streets. Watch this. It's not apples and apples. It's not equal. But we're on a very slippery slope, slope in this country toward throwing democracy out the window and every the single day. We have to defend the freedom of the press and civil rights here. We do, but and, we're not being you know, stoned in the street for being gay. Not yet. Not yet. They're completely... not yet. Now, how close do you think we are to a country where people are stoned in the streets for being gay, as Joy Behar suggests. Look, you know, I have to tell people this all the time. We can't even get funding for the wall, so the gay death camps are definitely not happening till the second term. I mean, we really have some time to battle this. She's, she's completely ridiculous. This narrative that they want to push is so absurd. There's no proof to it. It's total, it's just it's such a load of bull. Uh, I don't know, in, the, in that same discussion, she was uh, sort of ironically saying that the, that the protesters in Iran and uh, the, the so-called women's marchers here, these resist uh, protesters, she called them protesters, uh, are, are basically fighting for the same thing. And she said, well, you know, the, the, the details are different about uh, what, what they're, they're fighting against. Uh, but the, uh, the general thing, that they want democracy and freedom, and ours is deeply under attack in this country. All right, well, firstly, let's talk about that. In Iran, you have women tearing off their headscarves and in their hijabs. And here in New York and in Washington, you have women and men, liberal men, putting them on as a symbol of liberation. Of course. Uh, and when she says, it, yeah, it, it, it's so funny to see her saying our democracy is under attack. But it's First also, I mean, it's such a grotesque overstatement. And I know what it's like to get mad on television, but part of your brain says, you know, pull back a little bit. You know, don't say more than you mean. Don't overstate things grotesquely, because if you do, you're going to be called on it. And you shouldn't say things that aren't true. No one ever calls anybody on the left when they say like, ludicrous things like gays are about to be stoned in the streets. What? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, it's just this hysteria, and they, they have no evidence for it. They have absolutely no evidence for it, and uh, it's, it's exactly, they're just showing who they are. They have no argument. Yeah, uh, it's you childish. Know, yeah, it's very childish. Chadwick Moore, great to see you. All right, thank you, Tucker. Thanks. Well, Berkeley. CNN's Don Lemon suggested that Antifa is...